See, the nature of this life is such, you have only that which you abandon. The nature of life, even the phenomena around you is like this. For example, right now this looks black, not because it is black, simply because it's refusing to reflect light, that's why it looks black. This looks red, not because it's red. It holds back all the other dimensions of the color, reflecting only red. So what it throws out becomes its quality. This is the nature of existence here. What you try to be, you will not be that. What you just throw out, that becomes you, isn't it? If you throw money around, people think you're rich, yes? If you hold it, people think you're… maybe you don't have anything, isn't it? So what comes out of you is what is yours, in a way. So when you say mind or being mindful, I do not know much about it, but I believe people are trying to think themselves into this moment. Be in the moment, be in the moment. Well, why are you trying to be in the moment? Be somewhere else and show me. Hello? Can you be somewhere else? No, you're anyway here, so why are you trying to be here? So what you're saying is, don't think. It took millions of years of evolution to get you to this level of cerebral capability. But now, you want to give it up. The two basic qualities which sets us apart from every other creature is, we have a very vivid sense of memory. Everything that happens, we remember. This is why our experiences become our knowledge. And we have a fantastic sense of imagination. We can imagine something which is not yet and work towards creating it. These are the only two things people are suffering. <laughs> These are only two things. What happened ten years ago, they can still suffer. This does not mean they're suffering life, they're suffering their memory. What may happen day after tomorrow, they're already suffering. This does not mean they're suffering life, they're just suffering their imagination. They're suffering their memory and imagination, two basic faculties which set us apart from every other creature. You are ruining evolutionary process, you want to go back. You want to go back because you looked at monkeys jumping around happily on the trees. So you think it is a better way to live, but evolution gone waste time. This is a much bigger possibility. A possibility unrealized is always a big problem. Any possibility, if you don't realize what is the possibility and grasp it, all possibilities look like problems, isn't it? Right now that's a human problem. So, you don't have to be mindful, you should be mindless. Right now, you may be giving all kinds of contexts to your life, but essentially, what you call as my life right now is just a certain combination of time and energy. Yes? As you sit here, time is rolling away for all of us. Can you roll it back? You're an engineer. Can you roll it back? Yesterday was not fruitful, so I'll roll it back. Can you? It's rolling away for all of us. As we sit here, what is ticking away here is not the clock. What is ticking away is our life, isn't it? Since we came and sat here, you're half an hour closer to your grave. It doesn't matter how young you are, you are getting there, isn't it? Yes or no? So it's a certain amount of time. And that time, nobody can manage because it rolls at the same pace for everybody. You do something, you don't do anything, you sleep, you're awake, you're happy, you're unhappy, do whatever the hell you want, it just keeps rolling mercilessly, isn't it? So there is energy that you call as life. This, you can pitch it at different levels. If you're like this, If you're like this, twenty-four hours feel like thousand years. <laughs> but have you seen on a certain day you're very happy, twenty-four hours poof, went off like a moment? Yes or no? 
So, time is a very relative experience in individual subjective experiences. If you're joyful, if you live hundred years, it feels like a few moments, it's gone. Only miserable people will have a long life. Because if you're miserable, you'll always feel life is too long that you'll want to cut it short. But if you're joyful, the possibility that a human being holds, before you look around, it's over, really. But what possibility this carries? So what you need to manage is your energies, because life is a certain amount of energy, it's not limitless, but it can be enhanced. If you function at one level of energy, what you do in ten years' time, if you function at a different level of energy, the same thing you can do in one year's time. So if both people live for hundred years, in terms of impact and profoundness of experience, one has lived for a thousand years, another has lived for hundred miserable years. So this is all you can do. You may think right now, engineer, this one, that one, these are all limited contexts you're setting for yourself. Fundamentally as a life, it's just time and energy, isn't it? The question is what you make out of it. Do you want to make something out of it? There's no compulsion you have to make something out of it. When I say making something out of it is not a social phenomena I'm talking. What should you become in the society? That's not what I'm talking. Fundamentally, you have come here in terms of life is you want to experience life. Question is how profoundly? I want all of you to look at this. Do you believe you can enhance life by lowering your faculties? Hello? If you want to enhance this life, you must super enhance your faculties. That's the only and only way you can enhance this life. You cannot lower your, lower your faculties and think your life is getting enhanced. What kind of stupidity is that? Simply because it makes you a little like this. I can make you feel like this all the time, how's that? <laughs> no substance, I am always like this only. <laughs> Look at my eyes, I'm stoned. <laughs> yeah, never touch a substance but fully stoned all the time. <laughs> because I want you to understand this, the greatest chemical factory on the planet is here. If you are a good manager of this, you can create any experience that you want from within and also heighten your faculties. If you are having an experience, even to experience that, your faculty should be heightened, isn't it? Is this the great greatest chemical factory on the planet, most sophisticated? Do you agree with me? Are they chemical engineers? So I'm asking, how are you managing your system? What have you done? We gave you such a sophisticated machine. Have you read the user's manual at least? <laughs> no. Blindly do this and then you think pumping something is going to make this better? No. Believe me, the only and only way you can enhance this life is that your faculties are super bright. The way you see, the way you hear, the way you smell, the way you taste and the way you touch, if this is enhanced, is life enhanced in many ways? There are much more to it, but I'm saying from what you know from your experience. Suppose you could see twice better than somebody who is sitting next to you, is your life enhanced? Hmm? If you could taste better than other people, is life enhanced? If you could feel better, is it life enhanced? If you could hear better, is life enhanced? On this level you understand this, but there are many other dimensions of human faculties. If you enhance this, if you sit here, you will be blissed out simply sitting here. You wouldn't want to touch any damn thing because just sitting here is the greatest experience of your life. So, about what is the end game? If you had everything, what would you want? If you had everything that you can ever dream of, everything is right here, what would you want? <laughs> you must think, isn't it? 
I won't supply you with an answer. If you do not invest that much thought into your, li into your life, that means you're super short-sighted. Hello? Always being half alive is torture. This is the torture that a large segment of humanity is going through right now because they are half alive. Only one part of them has become alive. Only their physicality and mentality has become alive. The rest of it is yet to become alive. Half alive people will suffer everything. They will suffer ignorance, they will suffer education, they will suffer poverty, they will suffer affluence, they will suffer being alone, they will suffer being in a relationship. If they are not married, they suffer. If they are married, they, they… If they don't have children, they suffer that. As if children, if they are there, they can come and bite you. They do. No children, what are you suffering? But that also they suffer. Just show me one thing that human beings are not suffering right now. Just show me one aspect of life that human beings are not suffering right now. They're suffering just about anything, not just life. They're even suffering death before it happens. See, he's thinking of a building a pyramid for himself. <laughs> that which is and that which is not, everything they suffer. This is not… You are not suffering loneliness, you are not suffering company, you are not suffering money, you are not suffering poverty. What you are suffering is, you are half alive. You are desperately trying to make yourself fully alive through money, through drink. In so many ways, you are somehow trying to make yourself fully alive, which is yet to happen fully. Here and there you feel a burst of aliveness, but again it ebbs down. So, when people are constantly half alive, pleasure becomes an important part of your life, very important part of your life. Without it, you cannot exist. Pleasure becomes paramount in your life when you're only half alive. When physicality is all that you know, pleasure becomes of immense importance in your life. If you become fully alive, you will become so blissful, joyful, ecstatic without reason. Bursts of ecstasy without, within you without any reason, it's almost embarrassing. <laughs> now. The thought of pleasure just evaporates. Looking for a drink, looking for some kind of pleasurable thing just evaporates out of your mind because you're fully alive. When you're fully alive, pleasure disappears. When you're half dead, pleasure is an important, important thing. If you just believe something hard and fast because Either you are born into that culture or somebody has really worked upon you or some other compulsion has made you take to it. The moment you believe this is it, then there is no need for your mind. Mind is a tool for exploration, not for drawing conclusions. Unfortunately, most people are using their mind to draw conclusions. This mind is not about drawing conclusions, this is a tool for exploration. That you can continue to look at life in deeper and deeper ways, in more profound ways of experience and knowing. That's the significance of the mind. If you had to just draw conclusions, you don't need such a complex structure of mind. You don't need it. Now, the disease of doubt and suspicion, you try to fix it with faith, no. You just have to refine your logic, you have to refine the nature of your mind that you need to understand 
that there is a way to be in this world without taking any position. That's why the postures, yoga postures, you understand? <laughs> to twist yourself this way, that way because to understand that I don't want to take any particular position in my life. I'm not stuck this way or that way. I want to know life from every possible direction. Every possibility that this life is, I wish to know when I'm alive. So if that has to happen, you need a flexible mind, a mind that has not taken positions, a mind does not, does not believe or disbelieve something. See, do not think disbelief is an option. Belief and disbelief are not two different things. They are positive belief or negative belief, that's all they are. Two different ways of believing, belief, belief and disbelief. So we are not talking about faith versus atheism, belief versus disbelief, no. We are talking about why can't you learn to not take a position of anything. Right now, to conduct a particular activity, we take positions. But there is no need to take positions to live, to be alive here. If you want to know life, you should not take any position or any opinion about anything. The moment you form an opinion, that means you are not open to anything else, isn't it? Whether it's about a person or yourself or about the life around you, you don't form any kind of opinion or conclusion. Conclusion means death, yes? Life means no conclusion, you're looking. Instead of sharpening your vision, you're drawing a conclusion because conclusion brings a certain certainty. It brings a certain confidence. The moment you believe something, you're confident. Confidence without clarity is a disaster. It's better to see clearly rather than just believe something. If you believe something, it gives you confidence and sometimes it works, unfortunately. We've been talking about this all the way long. Even if you want to cross a street, what you need is clarity of vision, not confidence. Confidence can kill. The traffic is not much, it works. <laughs> That's the whole problem with it. <laughs> yes, the traffic is not much and it's not fast. Then it works and now you think it works, you apply it everywhere, you will get hit. So you don't need confidence. If you just give up your need for confidence, you're okay being here, not knowing anything. Actually, you don't know nothing. Please look at this. You really don't know anything about the nature of this existence, isn't it? Yes or no? You don't know when this entire solar system is going to fall apart, maybe it's tomorrow morning, do you know? Do you know whether it is going to fall apart tomorrow morning or not, do you know? You don't know when you'll fall dead, you don't know when it's going to happen, but it's all right. But if you are that kind of a mind which is looking for faith, you know everything, not just here, beyond death, where you will go, what kind of accommodations you will get there. You know the works. This kind of knowing is what needs to go. Uh, an ignorance which is aware and acknowledged by yourself that I'm ignorant is a far more powerful and profound state than a knowledge that you have concluded about. You have conclusions about everything and everybody. Just try this one simple sadhana in your life, all of you. Whatever conclusions you have about yourself, about the people around you, about the situations around you, just give it up tonight. Tomorrow morning just wake up and look at everything fresh. Just do this every day, at least see if you can maintain this for the first one hour after you're awake you will see it will take lots of work, you understand? It will take lots of work, twenty-four hours of the day to look at everything fresh. If you're looking at everything fresh, you will not miss a single possibility. Everything is alive to you. 
where people see nothing, you will see all kinds of things. Where people see problems, you will see possibilities in life. But the moment you conclude, if you make conclusions and you concretize it and then you get it endorsed by heaven, then you're calling that faith. Ignorance endorsed by a great authority will not become truth. This is the biggest problem that people think authority is truth. Now, truth is the only authority in the creation, in this existence. Right now there is no experience of life. Largely you're just a bundle of thought, emotion, ideas, opinions and prejudices. Your psychological drama is being mistaken for life. Your psychological drama, we can all sit in the same place and each one of us can have something different going in our minds right now, yes or no? So obviously what's happening in your mind is your psychological reality, it's not existential, it has no existential basis. It is in this sense people are telling you be in the moment, because there is no basis to your psychological reality, you can make up whatever you want. Or in other words, your creation, your petty creation has become larger than the magnificent creation of the creator. So spiritual process means you set this anomaly right. You understand your psychological reality is something that you're making up. I'm not saying you should not make it up, you can, but you must be able to switch it off when you don't want. The problem is it's just on twenty-four hours, so it looks like that is the reality. It is not the reality, you just making it up. Yes or no? The made-up world has become larger than the real world. Just to correct this is spiritual process. You understand what is real and what is made up. This means you're spiritual. If you can identify what is existentially true and what is not true, you will navigate… navigate your way through life effortlessly, isn't it? If your mind, your body takes instructions from you, being peaceful and joyful is not even an issue. Is it an issue? Hmm? If your body and mind is taking instructions from you, is it an issue? Is it even a consideration? Do you… do you have to even bother about it, how to be peaceful, how to be joyful? There's no such thing. This is coming from a very unnatural situation because made-up world has become larger than the real world. What's happening on your phone has become bigger than the cosmos, isn't it? So spiritual process does not mean… is not prescribing how you should be, be whichever way you want. You like misery, do it, what's my problem? If you're enjoying misery, what is my problem? I will not tell you, be joyful. You like to be miserable, I appreciate that. But if you had a choice, would you choose misery? No. Maybe once in a way you like to read a tragedy or watch a tragedy, that is somebody else suffering, not you, isn't it <laughs> You may want to watch a tragic movie or a drama, but you don't want a tragedy in your life, isn't it so? I trust your judgment on these things. So spiritual process means that you read the user's manual, you know exactly how this works. This happened to Gautama the Buddha, you heard of Gautama the Buddha? Because of some astrological prediction that his father heard that he may either become a great emperor or a great sage and he wanted him to become a great emperor. He protected this boy and put him in a separate palace where it's all luxury, everything that you can dream of, everything there, got him married to a very pretty young woman, everything on. No, he should not see any suffering. But one day he just went out. He saw one old man and he asked, why is this guy like this? Uh, you know, his chauffeur, his chauffeur or his chariot driver said, oh, everybody becomes like that after a certain time. He said, what, me? I'm a young prince, will I become like that? 
Hey, yeah, everybody will become like that. He shook him. Then he saw a man who's suffering with some kind of disease, ailment. So why is that guy like that? Said, it'll happen to a lot of people. Who it will hit, there is no prediction. Anybody can become ill. Most people think it happens to other people. No, it can happen to us. Hello? And then this, he saw a funeral, a dead body. So what is that? He said, that is inevitable, everybody will die. Do you also know? You will also die? No, because most people believe other people die. <laughs> no, intellectually they know, but they think they are forever. No, you must be conscious, you are mortal. Mortal means you have a limited amount of time and energy. If you are always conscious about this, how would you organize your time and energy? You decide. If you're conscious about it, if you think you're a superhuman being, you're not going to die, other people will die, all the best. <laughs> It'll come. You can realize this on your deathbed and die. See, people may think this is extreme, but you must go and volunteer in a hospice or in a hospital ward where people die and you must see, it's very important, it's very, very important. Only then you become sensitive to life, life becomes super valuable because you know it's a limited amount of time. If you watch this, unfortunately today in the world, over eighty percent of the people when the last moment when it comes, when they die, they are not fearful, they are not in pain, they are not in something else, they are just bewildered. A look of bewilderment comes because all their life they just lived their thought and emotion, they never lived a life. This is important, you must understand there is a psychological reality in your head and there is an existential reality which is life. Most people are mistaking their psychological reality to be existential. Your thought and emotion has become more significant in the cosmos, isn't it? Hello? Huh? What you think, what nonsense you think and feel, has it become more important than the universe or no? This means you are making your creation more significant than the larger creation, this means you must suffer. If you don't suffer, I'll be disappointed. Yes, I will be. Because if you live… if ignorance doesn't make you suffer, then what? Then what's the use of me? <laughs> because it takes a lot to come out of the trap. What is the use of somebody striving to come out of the trap of ignorance? When people can live wonderfully in their ignorance. What is the point? What is the use of knowledge? What is the use of knowing? What is the use of enlightenment? What is the use of realization? If people can live absolutely blissfully in their ignorance, what is the point? When you're ignorant, you must suffer. And I want you to know, the greatest evil right now on the planet is not evil, it's ignorance. There are no problems, <laughs> only situations, it is all in how you approach them. Well, this is going to rankle up a lot of people who are seeing problems, problems everywhere and a whole lot of people think creation itself is a problem and they're going to solve it. No, creation is not a problem, it's just we are born here, it is a situation. How we conduct the situation within ourselves, is entirely ours. How we conduct the situation around us is subject to various realities, but the moment you label it as a problem, it will become a distress within you. So it's very important from birth to death, your birth is also a situation, death is also a situation, in between various situations, 
All these situations, no matter what is the nature of the situation, whether it's happening the way you want it or it is not happening the way you want it, it is all about realizing that you're here to experience life. Without situations, you cannot experience life.